So this is my first Victron video and we're going to make it easy to understand for beginners. Because when people see Victron systems on YouTube and on the internet, it's very confusing and somewhat intimidating. And on this system, we have a lot of cables here, but most of them are for communication. So let's remove those first. And look at that, much easier to understand. So we're gonna go through all of these components and the batteries and talk about how they work together in this system. So first, the heart of the system is the battery bank. And these are three 12 volt SOK batteries in parallel. So this is the main positive and this is the main negative. Now these batteries are connected to the Victron Energy Lynx Shunt 1000. And this allows you to calculate how much power is going in or out of the batteries and the state of charge. And these are fantastic. They can handle 1000 amps and they can communicate with all the other components in a Victron Energy system. Now let's take off this cover and see what's inside. Now do not let the complexity fool you. This is actually a very simple component. This is where the battery bank connects to the rest of the system. So we're gonna have a main fuse on this side, on the positive. And then on the negative, we have a thousand amp shunt. And this is what calculates how much power is going in or out of your battery bank. Now on the side of the shunt, we have a communication port. And this is where you connect this shunt to the rest of the system so that this can talk to the other components. And this is a VE.CAN connection and we'll talk about that more very soon. So the battery bank connects down here, and then you connect the other side of the shunt to the Lynx distributor. Now this is a very cool device, and I recommend everyone check this out. This is like a fuse block, but for very large loads. So you can see on the top, we have two aux gauge cable, and these are massive, and these supply the inverter. And then down here, we have a smaller cable with a smaller fuse, and this supplies the solar charge controller. And this distributor connects to the shunt with these two bolts. And this small gray cable connects the shunt to the distributor. So all you have to do is plug it in for it to work. Now the lights are on up here, so it's actually working. The hardest part is routing this silly little cable. It's so difficult. That looks decent. Usually I just slap the cover back on and then it fits in there somehow. Now the coolest thing is you have terminals up here and you can add another distributor onto this one. So you have one shunt, distributor, and as many distributors as you like. But this is limited to 1000 amps, so be sure to not exceed that. Now the cable management is quite interesting on this system. If you lift up these covers, it will expose the negative bus bar. And you can see the black cables in the back that are connected to the negative bus bar. Now when you want to connect the positive, you put this cover down, you put a fuse right here for your load, and then you connect it right here, just like this one. Now if you want to add a second distributor up here, you can also use a communication port to connect the whole system together. So small gray cable from here up to the first communication port on the other distributor. And this entire system is connected with this communication port and we'll get to that in a second. For now let's put the covers back on. Be mindful of the communication cable so you don't pinch it. Now these massive cables connect the distributor to our 12 volt inverter and also our solar charge controller. These cables have to handle 250 amps and these only have to handle 40 amps. So there's a massive size difference. Now this inverter is probably the nicest inverter I've ever had in my life. It does everything. If you want the best of the best, um, these do cost more, but they are absolutely incredible. This is the Multi Plus 2 by Victron Energy. And this is where those cables connect to the inverter. We have the positive side over here and the negative side over here. Now on the left side, we have the AC input and AC output terminals. If you're an advanced user and you know about the Victron systems, you can use this terminal up here. But most people will do fine with putting their loads to this first terminal down here. So if you have a loads panel or something, you wanna connect it right here. This connects to the grid. So if you have an AC input cord or shore power, this is where you connect it. Now this inverter can be programmed to do all sorts of crazy cool things, but it's mainly for advanced users. So most beginners can ignore this terminal block. What you do need to know is this VE bus connection port, and this is how this inverter communicates with the rest of your components. So we're gonna learn about this in a second, but this is where you connect your communication cable. 
Now this AC input can handle a lot of current. The maximum bypass or how much can go from the AC input to the AC output is 50 amps. So this cord is undersized, but you can change the settings in the inverter so that this works great when you're using it as a battery charger. But you have to change those settings to be able to use this cord. Next, the AC output is connected to two GFCI receptacles. AC output number two is over here, and AC output number one is over here. And when I'm inverting, I'm using AC output number one. So this is how I power loads with this system. Now this system is charged off of solar through these two cables that go outside. These connect to 800 watts of solar panels that are mounted on the ground. These are connected to the smart solar charge controller that's called the MPPT-130. And the 100 refers to the maximum voltage open circuit that your solar panel array can be. And then the 30 is how much in amps this thing can push into your battery bank. And this controller can only work with 12 and 24 volt battery banks. And then over here, you have a communication port. This is where you add the cable so that this unit can communicate with everything else. So let's summarize the main components. We have a battery, a shunt, a distributor, an inverter, and the solar charge controller. Now all of these will communicate together through what's called the Serbo GX. And this is the brain of the system. This allows all of these components to communicate together and to connect to the internet, to have a display screen, and so much more. This thing is actually quite impressive. But in order to do that, we need to connect these components to the Serbo GX. And each component has a different type of cable. So this is where it confuses people, but I promise you it's very simple. Now the Serbo GX requires its own connection to the battery, and this is the power input, this little plug right here. And you'll see that this is connected to the battery with the Lynx distributor. This is a fused line, you can see the inline fuse, so it's safe to connect directly to your battery and then just plug it in down here. And then it will take a few seconds and then it will turn on. Now the Serbo GX has a lot of ports on the top and on the bottom. And over here we have the VE bus, which is a type of communication protocol for Victron Energy devices. We have the VE CAN, which is like a CAN bus. Over here we have the BMS CAN, if you want to use a BMS system battery through Victron Energy. And then these USBs power other devices like the screen when we attach it. And the screen also connects to this HDMI port right here. And then these white ports right here are for the VE Direct Communication System. And again, another communication protocol for Victron Energy devices. And this is for Ethernet cable to connect to your network. And on the bottom we have two relays, digital inputs, temperature, and tank sensor inputs. And then a micro SD slot if you want to store that information. Now first we're going to connect the shunt to the Serbo GX with the VE or Victron Energy CAN communication protocol. And luckily we're only connecting two devices. You can use this VE CAN communication protocol to connect three or four or five different devices. But you need to know how to do it. Not only do you need cables to daisy link these together, Together, but at the first and the last device, you need to terminate it with these termination plugs. So let me show you so it's easier to understand. First, you want to connect the devices with an Ethernet cable. And right here, it says VE CAN. So we're going to plug the Ethernet cable right there. Now the other end of the cable will plug into the shunt's communication port. Now the cable is connecting these two together, but we need to terminate the ends. Because we only have two devices, this is the first and this is the last. So we're going to terminate these. If you had three or four, you would still only terminate two of the devices, only the first and the last in that daisy chain link, which you can see some diagrams online in the Serbo GX manual. First termination, the VE CAN has two ports. In the other port, we're gonna plug in this terminator just like that. Now on the shunt, you'll have two communication ports. If we had a third device over here and we wanted to connect it to this chain, we would use a cable to connect this to the third device. But because we're not, and this is the last component of the chain, we're gonna use this termination plug. 
We're going to plug it in right there. And that connection is done. Now the information from the shunt will go up to the Serbo GX and it works automatically. You don't have to set anything up. It should be working right when we turn everything on. Now let's connect the inverter to the Serbo GX. And this requires using the Victron Energy or VE bus communication protocol. And personally, this is my favorite. All you need is one cable to connect the inverter to the Serbo GX. So first we wanna plug this cable into either one of the VE bus communication ports on the inverter. Now the other end of the cable needs to plug into the VE bus port on the back of the Serbo GX. And that's it, this inverter is now communicating with the Serbo GX. Now what's really cool is if you had a second inverter over here, you don't have to run a cable all the way over to the Serbo GX. You can daisy chain them together with this communication cable. So this second inverter would be connected to this first inverter through the second communication port right here. And that's why there's always two communication ports when you see VE bus, so that you can daisy link chain them together. Now let's move on to the solar charge controller because this one is a little different. And this requires a special type of cable that looks very different than all the other ones. The first two communication methods, we use standard ethernet cables, but this one uses a special cable made by Victron. But this one is very easy to use as well. You simply just plug it in. So on the Serbo GX, we have VE Direct 1, 2, and 3. So we're just gonna plug it in to one, just like that. And then the other end of the cable plugs in right here just like that. And now the solar charge controller is communicating with the Serbo GX. You don't have to set anything up. Now we have the shunt solar charge controller and inverter connected to the Serbo GX, and the Serbo GX is connected to the battery, and the lights are on. So now we can connect the screen and monitor our system. And this is the screen and the cable. So you have two cables that you need to plug into the Serbo GX. So first you have an HDMI that plugs in right here, and a USB right here. Now the screen should turn on. And how cool is that? So this is the AC output of the inverter, then we have the battery, and this is the solar charge controller. And right now we have 330 watts going into the batteries, and this is our state of charge. And if I were to connect the AC input to the grid, it would show us how much power is coming in through that side. Now let's connect the AC input and see what happens. Oh, there we go. And we are charging, so notice how much power is coming from the grid into the battery. It shows you the voltage, the current, how many watts for the AC loads. It shows you all sorts of cool stuff. Now let's disconnect the grid and talk about the settings. Now the first thing that you wanna do when you set this system up is set up the settings for the shunt so it knows the capacity of the battery. So click on the screen and press menu. And this is the inverter, this is the shunt, this is the solar charge controller, notifications and settings. We wanna click on the shunt arrow and then scroll down to settings, and then press battery. And then this is where you set the capacity for your entire battery bank at your nominal voltage. So at 12.8 volts, I have 618 amp hours of storage capacity with the three batteries that I'm currently using. And you can change these settings for whatever battery you have. These settings that I have are great for lithium iron phosphate. So charge voltage 13.8, tail current 2%, charge detection time three minutes, um, Pukert exponent for you know lead acid, it's gonna be higher, but for us, for lithium iron phosphate, it's 1.05. Charge efficiency factor is 99%. Current threshold, 0.1 amps. Time to go averaging period, three minutes. Time to go discharge floor, 10%. And then synchronize state of charge to 100%. On the first cycle, after you charge it to 100%, Press, press to sync right here, and then it will set it to 100%. And then you can ignore the last setting unless your current readings are false. And let's see what the inverter is doing. So let's click up here. It says that it's on, it's inverting. Input current limit. So see this little tiny arrow at the bottom right? This means that we can change this setting. So if I click it right here, we can change this figure with the negative and the positive buttons. So for me, connected to a 20 amp supply, 15 amps works great. So I'm gonna select that with the check mark, and now it is saved. And it shows the DC voltage at the inverter input, the DC current. It does not show the state of charge, 
and it also can show you the stats on AC line in and AC line out for the L1. There's another output and that's different, but that's for advanced users only. Now let's check out the smart solar charger right here. And this section is pretty cool. So right now we're doing a bulk charge and then it shows you the PV array stats. So the voltage, the input amperage, and how much in watts you are getting from your solar array. The battery, it shows the voltage at the output or where it connects to the battery, and then how much current we're pushing into that battery right now, which is 27 amps. And I just set up the system so we've only produced 2.24 kilowatt hours total. And then lots of other random settings. If we press device, it will show you how it's connected to the system. So this one is using VE Direct. And then you can change the name right here if you want to type something in. So let's go out of here. And then you have a notifications tab. And luckily there's no notifications, so we're good to go. And then under settings, we can change the Wi-Fi connection. So let's go down to the Wi-Fi. And here, this is where you connect to your home Wi-Fi network. So if you want this to access the internet so you can control this remotely, this is how you do it. Or we can use an ethernet cable. So right now it's unplugged, but if I connected that cable, we could control it through that instead. And then there's Bluetooth, GPS, generator, all sorts sorts of cool stuff. I mean, you can go in here for hours and do all sorts of fun stuff. And then go back to pages. And now we're back to the monitoring page. You can also swipe over to this one, but I don't like it. I think this one looks a lot cooler. Now this video could easily be three hours or longer if we covered all of the features of this inverter and the Serbo GX and how to connect other devices. But I wanted beginners to understand how easy it is with the top three communication protocols so that you can build your own small system. And this will get you up and running. You can change the settings and you can monitor your system. Once you have it set up like this, then you can go through all of the settings and see what you can do. So thank you so much for watching and let me know if you have any questions. I'm gonna have the system set up like this for a very long time for demonstration purposes and for testing. And I should also mention that Victron does cost a lot more, but this is why. Everything works and these will work for decades. I don't have to worry about anything. Once you buy into the Victron ecosystem, you're set. You are good to go for a very long time. So thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.